Hi, it's Ann Weiser Cornell, and this is Support for Stressful Times. The times remain stressful, at least for me. And even in calm times, your life might be stressful. So it's not just the times, but it's how is it? How is it to live your life? How is it to face what you're facing? And many of us face hard times. If not now, then at another time. And so wonderful that we're gathering together here to give each other support and also practice some practical moves that we can make that can help with those stressful times. Ah, you know, my number one positive practical tip for stressful times is to pause. Pausing is very simple. No matter what you're doing, you pause. When I pause, I often take a deep breath just naturally. So it's not like I should take a deep breath. It's, oh, I'm pausing. Ah, I think my body likes to pause. And that's signified by that deep breath that comes, you know? When you're doing something your body likes, like mm, sliding into a warm bubble bath or going out and taking a walk in a beautiful place. Often your breath shows you, I like that, you know, or getting a hug. Do you ever get any hugs? I hope so. They're pretty wonderful. Your body often shows, ah, oh, I like that. So we're pausing together right now. Pausing, feeling your feet, feeling your seat, feeling being here and notice what happens. If your breath deepens, if your shoulders relax a bit, that, not necessarily, but it might happen. Mm. Yes, Daniel says, nice to see you back from your seminar. Yeah, I was at a seminar. <sighs> So that's another kind of breath ah, about a lot happening. Yes, I, I went on my first two week seminar from here in Berkeley, Berkeley, California to Colorado, two hour plane ride. Something in me was nervous about the plane ride. Something in me was nervous about arriving at a place that I didn't know I hadn't been before. And it turns out that it was a bit scary to arrive there. Almost the first thing we found out was that half of the staff wasn't vaccinated. It was sort of a laissez-faire, hippie kind of place. We let people do whatever they want to do. It wasn't really a resort or a hotel. It was a, an intentional community. So it was a lot of stuff was stirred up in me about finding out this was not a safer place as I'd been hoping it would be. And I was with a group of people who felt the same way, all were vaccinated. We could talk to each other about how we could keep ourselves safe. And we did, we managed. There's something very powerful about sharing the situation that you're facing with other people. Isn't that right? The first night there, I thought this is a big mistake. I wish I hadn't come. Plus that first night there was a mosquito in my room, really adding to the feeling of this is a big mistake. Second night, oh, I kind of like it here. It's gonna be okay. Third night, wow, I'm glad I came. So it is interesting how the scariness of the outer world can evolve as we feel more comfortable and safe inside. Have you had any situations like that happen to you? The mosquito, no mosquitoes after that. <laughs> Maybe we learned how to keep the screens closed, but it was interesting that only on the first night when I felt the most miserable and horrible was there also a mosquito in my room. Marguerite writes, went to a party for the first time in 18 months, was scary, but lovely. Still now a bit nervous. Ah, yeah. You know, the other thing was, when I came back, because 
my partner was nervous about me having been away for two weeks and in all these kind of exposure situations. So before I even talked to him, I went to a Walgreens and bought a home COVID test. Took 15 minutes, it was very easy to do. I didn't even have to poke the very back of my sinuses and I was okay. And then, and then I said, it's okay, you can kiss me. Yes, Marguerite, your test is in the mail. Yeah, Walgreens has them if you have a Walgreens. So nice to be with you. So what are you facing these days? What's stressful for you? I hope nothing. But here we are together. And how, what can we share? What can we share? Khan writes, there are people in my life who won't get vaccinated. I'm so sorry to hear that because I personally think that, that people not getting vaccinated is a huge part of the problem. And of course, there are a few who have legitimate reasons for that. But mm, yeah, I, I, I share the worry. I share the worry. Iraida, you, you, you have your PhD defense coming up. Oh my gosh. Mm. Well, that is a, could be stressful and a great time to practice some of the tips we're going to practice together today. Number one, pausing. Lily says, I'm facing a trip by plane to Washington State on Saturday to see my six-year-old granddaughter, my son, and his wife. The little one has not had her vaccine. Wow, can they even vaccinate six-year-olds? Yeah, I went out, visited my granddaughter last month. My daughter said, before you hug her, take a shower and change clothes. Something, there was something. What can we do? Oh yes, Rosh Hashanah, Shana Tova. Ah, hope for the new year, yes. Yeah, Deb writes, my husband, my family won't get vaccinated, but they want to see us. Well, it's tough, right? <laughs> ah. Let, okay, so pausing is number one. What's number two? Well, number two is that your stressful feelings are not all of you. You are more than your feelings. You don't have to either get taken over by your feelings or push them away and repress them. Those are not the only two choices. Because emotions, our emotional life, our, our emotions, our feelings about things, we need them. They're full of information. They're part of our life. They connect us with ourselves. Our emotions connect us with ourselves and with other people and with life itself. And when you think about looking at a beautiful sunset and having your eyes filled with tears, and how awe-inspiring that is, nobody would want to miss that. We need our emotions and sadness at, at a loss. Wouldn't it be too bad if we didn't feel sad when we lost somebody? That's part of the process of being alive. So I am a big fan of emotions. The trouble is when we become identified with our emotions, identified means I am. And it's interesting that in English, we often use language that sounds like we are our emotions. I am angry, right? I am angry. I am. That, that's how it feels at that moment. And yet, you are more than angry, no matter how angry you are. I am sad. You are more than sad, no matter how sad you are. So. There's this long word that doesn't sound very interesting, disidentification, or we can call it unmerging, or we can call it creating a relationship with the emotions. And that's done by saying hello, or by saying, I am sensing something in me. So you go from, I am sad, to, I am sensing something in me is sad. I am sensing something in me is angry. Something in me, a big something. <laughs> you know, it can be a big something. But it's all the difference in the world, right? Because if I'm identified 
with my feeling, then there's no relationship there. There's me, I'm, I, I am sad, I am stressed, I am upset, I am irritated, and there's no relationship. But if I say I'm sensing something in me is stressed, then I'm here and it's here, the stressed feeling. Now I can be with the one who's stressed in me. Oh, and that makes a huge amount of difference. So please try that with me right now. You know, take a stressful feeling that you feel now or that you felt recently, overwhelmed, upset, irritated, angry, sad, hopeless, devastated, scared. That's how I felt when I arrived at that place in Colorado. I felt just scared and also kind of stupid. Shouldn't have come here. Should have asked more about the vaccination situation. Okay, so take a stressful feeling. I am mm, scared. And now say, something in me is scared. Something in me is upset. Something in me. Most of you've heard me say this before, but it's worth practicing. Because I still forget to do it. If I forget to do it, you probably forget to do it too. So we're giving each other a lot of community support for continuing to do this. What happens when something in me, right? Something in me. Something in me is scared. <laughs> I feel that deep breath coming right there. And the next thing is, if something in me is scared, then I can be with that. So I maybe can sense where in my body, right? Before I sort of felt all scared. But if I say something in me is scared, I get a, my stomach comes to awareness. Oh, there, there it is. It's down here. It's down here. There it is. And that helps because again, I can feel well, my head, my arms, my feet, my legs, they're not scared. In fact, I'm okay. And this place is scared. What a difference that is. What a difference that is. Especially from the point of view of the scared part, right? When it was all of you, it had nobody with it. But now, when it's something in you, it has company. It has your company. And so the, hmm, I'm, I'm saying hello to the part of me that's scared and telling it, hello, I'm with you. See, this process is not meant to push feelings away. Oh, that's just something in me that's scared. That's not why we're doing it. We're doing it to increase our relationship with what we feel. Something in me is scared and I'm saying, hello, I'm with you. So there's an inner contact, an inner company that is so, so powerful and healing and leads to the next steps of self-understanding and, and shifts in those emotional states. Marion says, a, a part of me, a big part of me is scared of the world starting up again and nobody taking note of the climate emergency. Oh my gosh. I'm so with you on that. Ah, and Rebecca says, I might have to cancel my Toronto trip to see my 91-year-old mom as she doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah. I just says, planning a working trip to Manchester, my passport and driving licenses need updating. They're stuck in bureaucracy. Oh my gosh. And that may mean you have to drive for six hours and you're concerned about your stamina. Yeah. No wonder. You know, that's another thing we can say to our feelings is no wonder. So when you have this relationship, this inner relationship, and you're with the scared part of you or the worried part of you, the upset part of you, it's telling you how it feels. Oh, I hear you, you can say. And 
No wonder, no wonder you feel that way. Oh, no wonder is such a empathic thing to say inside ourselves. Eleanor writes, I find it hard to create space or relationship when I'm feeling depressed. It feels overwhelming like a blanket. Well, you're doing a very good job, Eleanor, of sensing exactly what it feels like. And I would recommend doing that. Taking some time and just really sensing in detail what kind of blanket it is. How far does it stretch? What's the blanket made of? In other words, really get the actual sensory detail of what it's like right now. And there's a big difference between what it's always like, what it's usually like, and what it's like right now. Because the right now, everything changes. Everything has the potential to change in the present moment. That's when change is possible. So Sonia writes, there are different ways to see the world these days. And Sonia's discovering that she prefers to stay at home and learning so many new things on online webinars. Okay, well, glad to know that you're doing that. Yeah, Deb writes, something in me is feeling sort of weak and off balance. There you go, very good. Feeling the difference between I feel weak and off balance and something in me is feeling weak and off balance. And that, that is the beginning of a relationship that has so much more in it. You can sit with that something that feels weak and off balance, checking the words weak, off balance, see if they fit really well. Take some time to sense if there's more that hasn't been put into words yet. The inner relationship is a relationship of listening. Listening. We're not ever trying to change our feelings because I really don't think that's possible. It's possible for feelings to change. In fact, they love to change. They change all the time. But for me to change my feelings by saying, I don't want to be angry. No, don't think that's possible. You say hello to angry. You say, I'm with you. I'm listening. Nancy writes, I want to retire, but this scares me because of the decrease in income. And my husband has MS. Oh, I'm sorry, Nancy. He can still work, but that could change any time. I want more time taking care of my ill husband and our dog and cat, and I want someone to take care of me. Ah, <sighs> of course, no wonder. And you can be with that big and very legitimate and important feeling of wanting someone to take care of you, even without knowing the solution or the answer. Oh, this is such an important thing to say. Because there's a part of us that doesn't want to be with our feelings unless it can figure out what to do about them. But many times we have feelings and how they resolve or what, what they become or how we get help with what they're worried about is still going to be developing. We don't know yet what will be the solution or the answer. So if we can't feel our feelings, until we have the solution or the answer, then we're, then we're caught, we're stuck in a loop. Can't feel this because I don't know how, what to do about it. So, you know, the same is true of desire when you want something, but you don't know how to get it. And actually that's what Nancy's talking about, wanting someone, wanting to be taken care of by someone. And I don't know how that's gonna happen. So let that be okay to have the wanting to have the feelings and to not know yet what will happen, how we'll resolve that, how we'll figure that out. Kat writes, something, is, something in me is sad and missing my mama. No wonder. And you can say, I really hear you, of course, no wonder. Yeah, very nice. Susie writes, something in me feels tired irritable and wanting to nourish myself rather than my business. Wow, Susie, I love how your body's talking to you. You know, I found out that I've been working too hard. Uh, how did I find out? I, I noticed I have high blood pressure. And that's a very clear way that my body was telling me, you're pushing too hard, you're working too hard. I gave up some things. 
And my body said, ah, oh, thank you. So work-life balance? Yes, but not because I figured out, but because I sense inside, what are the things that I love? And what are the things that actually aren't important, but I'm doing them maybe because I think I should, I think I have to. It takes some time, but it's a process that includes your body, includes your sense of it all. Ah, oh, Jennifer writes, I have friends who practice this with me, this thing we call focusing. Huh? Regular support has created something new, moments of emotional rest. Hmm. Yeah, you know, and if people are wondering, how do you practice this with friends? Well, I do have a course where I teach how to do that. It's called Path to Lasting Change. And we've got a new one coming up in October. It still has room in it. It's at a pretty good time of day for people in different parts of the world. And um, you learn how to exchange these skills. And then you can really have more of a regular structure for people to be there for you as you're spending time with how you feel. And, and the other thing is when you're, the, we call it the companion for another person, that also adds to your sense of resourcefulness and ability and confidence because you can be there for another person for that. It's really nice. Khan writes, I'm so tired all the time, I can't even feel. Well, what you're feeling is tired. You know, we start with what we do feel. It, and some people bring awareness into their body and they feel only numb. We'll start with numb. Even numb has a particular quality. As you stay with the feeling of numb, you may start to feel that it's a cover over something else. I don't know, that could happen. Just feel what it's like. Feel what it's like to be tired. That particular kind of tired. Where is it? In your eyes, in your bones? Is, it, is the word tired the right word or is it more exhausted? So Christina writes, it helps to be present with a group like this and not feel alone in hard times. And something in me just wants to crawl into a hole for safety and stay there, exactly something in me. Very powerful, very helpful language. Yes. Philippine writes, something in me feels heartbroken and insecure. Mm. Yeah, that sounds hard, Philippine. I'm with you on that. You can be with that place. I put my hands on my own heart because I wondered if that's where you felt it. Heartbroken. I am with that place in me that feels heartbroken and insecure. So it's in the time when we're gonna review what we talked about today. And thank you so much for the people who have shared in the chat and the people who have been listening without sharing. Every one of you is part of this community and has value here. And we would love to see you again in two weeks. So what have we been learning today? The most important thing is to pause and that your body can signify, often can signify that you're doing something that it appreciates by the change in your breathing. I know that's true for me. You might also feel a relaxing, like in your shoulders or in your jaw, when you're, when you're doing something that your body appreciates. And notice I'm pausing, feeling my body Feeling my body support, mm. ah, that often brings that deeper breath right there. And then noticing our stressful emotions and disidentifying from them, saying, I'm sensing something in me, feeling that way. And that that language and that intention alone can help feeling more space. It helps with the reminder that I'm not that feeling. That feeling is something in me. Exactly. Nancy writes in the chat, I am not this stress. I am so much more. Yay. 
The stress is a feeling in me that I acknowledge and embrace. Mwah! How beautiful. How beautiful. Yes. I am here. And so what's happening as we build up our sense of the I, who can be with any part of us, the heartbroken part, the overwhelmed part, and so on. I am the one who can be with all that. We, we grow our ability. That is a ability to be the larger I, something that we call self in presence. It grows. We cultivate it. It expands. So that's what I invite you to be practicing today. And at the times when we need it the most, it can be the most challenging. So practice even in the peaceful times so that the habit of something in me, I'm sensing something in me, I say hello to that. That habit begins to build in you. Even when something comes at you, there's a situation that's suddenly really hard. You have that practice in you of taking that breath, pausing and sensing. I, uh, I can be with that. I can be with that. Very good. All right, everyone. Have a beautiful two weeks till I see you again. Have a beautiful day. Bye for now. Thank you. Thanks to everyone. Bye for now.